Hello again, everyone. Edwin Leonard back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about the December 26, 2019 solar eclipse part two of two. Now, anyway, the first thing up is, well, one thing I want to talk about as far as the um, eclipse, uh, this eclipse goes and eclipses in general can be, uh, ser I could see them as uh, serendipitous. It could be something that may start us out as something negative could pretty much it could could manifest or uh, turn into actually uh, ultimately turn to something positive and auspicious. Now, let's take um, uh, this at one one example. Now, let's say that uh, somebody's having this uh, this Capricorn solar eclipse take place in their third house, right? Uh, it could start out as something like very restricting and limiting, connected with a short uh, journey. It could be something connected with their vehicle uh, that might need repair, for example. And the third house is local transportation. Now, let's say uh, what happens is the car is not working. They bring it into some uh, auto body shop. And what happens is the person actually working, uh, the, the person that has the problem with the car shows that they're actually, you know, some, somewhat mechanically inclined. Maybe it inspires them to something career-related with local transportation, such as your vehicle, uh, because of, of course, Capricorn energy can be connected with a career. Third house, short journeys. I see local. I mean, vehicles can be connected with that. I believe with um, with short journeys because that's what you're using to transport yourself. It's connected with local transportation. I would say so. Uh, maybe more specifically, could it be something with the skeleton of the car, given that we're talking about Capricorn engine? Now, I'm being flippant, of course, on that, people. But any, really, anything's possible. Now, another example, as far as something, um, you know, serendipitous, you know, connected with this, um, with this uh, new moon solar eclipse uh, energy in Capricorn. Let's take this example. Let's say somebody has this uh, Capricorn solar eclipse that occurs in their 12th house. Now Capricorn can be connected with the reputation. Now let's say that somebody's reputation is adversely affected by a hidden adversary such as uh, photos of the person online and slanderous lies that are associated with these photos. Now by a hidden adversary and of course the 12th house could be connected with hidden enemies, Capricorn, energy could be about our reputation. Uh, and let's say this could uh, somehow manifest in a new uh, ambition that could be connected with photography. Capricorn can be about ambitions, a career, and 12th house, again, could be connected with photography. Say somebody uh, actually uh, sees these photos and sees them in a positive light and says, you know what, you might be modeling material. And it winds up uh, manifesting into actually something positive where the hidden adversary might have actually done the person inadvertently or unwittingly a favor. It doesn't change the fact that the person was maligned and vilified or what have you, but you understand what I'm saying. Now, uh, another thing, I wanted uh, to get at uh, as well is, I mean, when you're talking about uh, solar eclipses in astrology, and eclipses in general can be about the de departure of others. I, I would think it would be more the lunar eclipse because lunar eclipses are more associated with culminations, uh, completions, and endings. But when you're talking about a solar eclipse, it could often be if someone is to uh, dissipate and you know vanish from your life or leave you or what have you, it could be the dominant male given that it is uh, the sun. Lunar eclipse, of course, that would be more like the, uh, somebody that was a uh, dominant female figure uh, in one's life scheme. Now, this could be a time where, I mean, let's say, I mean, you're talking about, you know, th this being in Capricorn, and, uh, some cases it could be a dominant male figure may may depart of uh, a person's life. It, I mean, depending on what house, I mean, the house may have play a role in it. If it's like falls in the seventh house, it, I think it would lean more toward a significant other or a marriage partner. In the tenth, it could be the dominant. I mean, the tenth house is uh, is connected with the dominant uh, parent, which is often the father. It could be a father um, that might be uh, that might be leaving the person. Uh, for whatever reasons, whether it might be irreconcilable differences or what have you. And I mean, being in Capricorn, it could be a Capricorn sun, moon or ascendant person or simply one that embodies Capricorn characteristics in it. 
And given its Capricorn energy, I think it could increase the chances of it being an older person. Of course, it's a, if it's a parent, if it's a you know, father or grandfather, it's going to be older. Uh, but it's, I mean, if it's, I mean, but in but in other cases, you could still have dominant male figures that could be younger uh, than you, people that have played you know, some kind of dominant role uh, in your uh, life scheme. But it would generally be, I mean, especially being in Capricorn, I would say be an older uh, person. Now, another thing, uh, I mean, because a significant other can be younger than you, as an example. Now, anyway. Now, this could be, um, and also, too, this would especially be true if you have other transits in your chart that would reaffirm or reinforce uh, this energy. I mean, say if you had, like, say if it was, like, Saturn, transit Saturn in the 12th house or and or transit Pluto in your 10th house, that could be an indicator of an older uh, person uh, leaving your life, such as a father or a grandfather in some uh, in some cases, get well. The twelfth house could be the father or grandfather dissipating out the person's life because you're talking about, you know, Saturn and being in the transiting the twelfth house of limitations and restrictions. But if you have like transit Pluto in the tenth house, that could be uh, the you know, could reflect a possible death even of a um, of the dominant parent, which is often the father. So that would be more like the father in that example, and even in something through transits or progressions that might reaffirm or reinforce this especially there's a greater chance of course and propensity of what I describe happening now also during uh, when you're talking about solar uh, new moon solar eclipses a lot of this could be what seemed very unattainable or even insurmountable may have a better chance of being accomplished maybe more conceivable and more plausible during the time uh, of the uh, new moon solar eclipse because remember when you're talking about a regular new moon in astrology that could be about getting a very um you know having really this you know that you feel like very rejuvenated and revived and revitalized and can give you make you feel like you got this near inexorable energy but when you're talking about you know, a new moon solar eclipse of course that could even be a greater amount of that energy because you are because it's a amp because of course a solar eclipse is like it's basically an amplified intensified version of a new moon in astrology now given that this is in capricorn this could be something that you again could be something that might have seen unattainable and surmountable even that might have a better chance of being achieved or accomplished now being in capricorn it could be connected something with mountain climbing or carpentry some kind of business goals or even rock climbing uh something just with general success in life it could be even something like a reputation score a reputation score where you probably wonder well what would that have to do how could that be of any significance because given that the solar eclipse could be something more life-altering have life-altering implications because when you have like a reputation or credit score whatever I mean, I mean those things if you could really improve them um that could be something that could help you in you know manifold ways of course too much to get into in the video but you understand what i'm saying and it can be of strong significance for you as far as your future goes now and some other examples could be something with construction or architecture even like long distance running something it because you're talking about something that's very sustained capricorn energy is about longevity and things that are that that can go on for an enduring period something like skiing or even hockey something that has to do i mean hockey is, is something a sports associated with a very cool surface i would say um, so in Capricorn energy can be very cool to say uh, the least and as an example I mean let's say I mean you're 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 trying to you're somebody coaxes you or cajoles you into doing some mountain climbing right and say this I mean this being a cap I would say this is a Capricorn related thing they tell you that it's x feet high it's a certain amount of height and because you hear this it sounds enticing it sounds like something that's very conceivable that you can do but when you arrive there say it's a little bit it's hot a lot higher than what you anticipated whether it was because the person uh, manipulated you or it was an honest mistake or they misconstrued the height or what have you uh, you find out that it's a lot higher than you originally anticipated now what could happen is you you feel like you have really not much choice okay I'm going to attempt to climb this mountain 
Now, what happens is, say you actually, you might, might find during this time, you find the willpower in that energy, that ability to actually do that. Even though you, it was very daunting, it was something you didn't think was within your grasp of something that was attainable or something you can do. You're actually doing it. I mean, and the reason as things like this, I'm not saying this would happen in everybody, every case of this kind of example, but there's a better chance I would say this happening given that you're dealing with very amplified, intensified energy since you're talking about a solar eclipse in astrology. Now, another thing too is that this could be a time too where um as an example uh this could be uh, another thing that could happen now um you have to look at uh you know there's a mars theory that's associated with this now let's say that you have uh transit mars uh at, i mean you're talking about transit mars when it hits this say you don't really feel anything or feel understand how this uh, eclipse impacted you personally or specifically right let's say what happens is you have transit mars hitting that degree of that uh eclipse in this case it's going that will happen on february 22nd uh 2020 when it hits that degree precisely and makes that exact conjunction uh through transit mars can be about as incisions opening things up like a wound or openings you know like when, when when you have a wound of course it's opening so figuratively speaking when when mars hits this point of where the solar eclipse the sun moon conjunction was at four degrees capricorn at this time this could give you a little more bit more insight as to what this means because it could be like an opening up like an eye opener of what this this might have meant to you specifically and you can become more cognizant of it at this time Another example could be, well, let's say when transit Mercury conjuncts it, and that's going to be on, uh, it'll make the exact conjunction to that degree of the eclipse on December 31st, 2019. Now, when that happens, that could give you maybe greater comprehension of it at this time as far as specifically how it affected you. So that could be another good transit for people that may not have been uh, really understood at the time uh, when the eclipse took place how it actually impacted or affected them specifically now this could be a time too where i mean you know you could have something too uh i mean a theory i have and this is only in theory that i have um not but, but as far as astrological theory it's possible i think that somebody that has their natal sun in their natal chart conjunct this position of this solar eclipse that takes place at, at four degrees Capricorn on December 26, 2019, may be able to shine light, so to speak, on how it may have personally affected you. And of course, the person has to have some knowledge, uh, you know, fairly profuse knowledge of astrology in order to understand how it might have affected him or her more specifically. But you understand what I'm saying. Now, let's say you take a person in their, their sinistry, so to speak, they have their natal Mercury conjunct uh that that degree of that that solar that solar eclipse at four degrees capricorn they may be able to have some mental comprehension and articulate and verbalize very well in a very loose manner what it actually uh meant to you so one last thing i wanted to get on is that this could, um, I mean, you got to factor in other transits as far as this goes. This could be something, I mean, you talk about these eclipses, the, we talk about a solar eclipse can give it a very powerful abundance and surfite of energy. But let's say you have some transit in your chart. You got to look for counter uh, indicators as well. Let's say you have transit Neptune making an adverse aspect to your natal Mars, Sun, or Ascendant. It might be a little bit more energy in terms of fantasizing and daydreaming as far as opposed to taking action on things. And your energy may be a little bit more dissipated. You might feel a little bit more lethargic. Another example, let's say you have transit Sun and or Mars in your 12th house at the time. That could be a time where you would be feeling, again, feel a little bit more lethargic and have a little bit less energy than you typically would during the time of the actual uh, new moon uh, solar eclipse. So anyway, uh, people, um, one last thing I wanted to talk about is there was one other thing. I'm going off a little bit on Gemini moon tangent here, but so another uh, way this might affect me I thought was interesting was that this transit 
So I stated in part one, it's going to hit my eighth house in my natal chart, but it's going to make a sex, a very tight sextile aspect to my 11th house north node in Pisces. So way this may, this could be very, very auspicious for me because it could be start of more of a career or some, or something where I'm getting that, um, you could say that that consistent, maybe that, that emotional or moral or even monetary support that would blend in very well. And that, that's, of course, I'm talking about the Capricorn eighth house energy could blend in very well with my future metaphysical aspirations. Of course, I'm referring to the North Node in the 11th house. So those are some ways this could manifest and pan out this time. Well, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. And until next time, people, Edwin Lawrence saying stay well.